Hello and welcome to this video on using a spreadsheet. Uh, what I'm going to do in this spreadsheet is give a very um, basic intro to um, how to use and manage functions in, um, I'm going to use Google Sheets, but what I'm going to talk about here is uh, almost exactly the same in Excel or the open, uh, the open version uh, LibreOffice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot a function. Uh, and what we need for a function is a string of numbers representing the x variables. So first thing I'm going to do is put some labels up here. Um, now these labels are not things that the spreadsheet is actually going to use. This is just for my reference. So I'm going to plot the function sine of x. And what I need to do is I need to enter numbers all the way down. And what I'm going to do is enter x values down in this column, and I'll enter f of x values in this column, but obviously I'm going to let the spreadsheet do the calculations for me. So what I'll do is I'll enter x values in this column and I'll enter f of x values in this column. Okay, so the sine of x, uh, the interesting interval of x would be, let's say, from minus pi to pi. Um, so what we do in the first entry here, usually we would enter just a number. So for example, if you're plotting from zero to 10, you would put a zero here, and then you would increase the numbers going down. I'm gonna start from pi, and I'd rather use exactly pi. So what I'm gonna do is enter a formula. So I use an equal sign for a formula, and then I wanna go from minus pi to pi. And now in, at least in Google Sheets, and I suspect in Excel it's similar, if you type in pi, uh, so let's see what it's going to do for me there. So you need it auto completed it to include a bracket and it's just using this function notation But it's really doesn't require anything in the bracket So when I type pi of nothing, it'll give me 3.14 and then you can see there's a minus sign in front But you could replace this with whatever your starting number is and now I want to use a formula to update that instead of doing all the math counting up um, all the cell values and putting each number in I'm going to use a formula, so I go with an equal sign. And here I'm going to refer to the previous cell because I want to increment it by a certain amount. So let's say we're going to go in steps of 0.1, so I add 0.1 to that. And you can see now I get minus 3.04159 dot dot dot. Okay, so uh, now we could keep on typing in the formula in each one of these cells, but that would be very time consuming and I don't want to do that. So instead I'm going to use a copy paste. So you can either use, if you're on a Windows machine, it would be Control C, or on a, a Mac, it would be Command C. I guess Linux would probably be Control C. And I'm gonna copy the formula, so Control C, and then move down to the fourth cell, and now I get another cell with yet another increment. Okay, so that is also time consuming because I'm gonna need like more than 30 steps here to get all the way across, more like 60, I guess. Uh, and so I don't want to type or copy 60 times over. Fortunately, spreadsheets have this nice feature where if you hover over the dot in the bottom right corner and hold your mouse button down and drag all the way to the end of however far you want to go and then release, when you get there, let's see, it should be around here. We get, oh, not quite there. I'll continue going a little further. We get an automatic filling in of all of the entries. Now you'll notice, even though I'm copying this cell over, the one that had the formula, the formula changes in each cell. And that's because these spreadsheets know that you're gonna be doing repeated formulas that require a certain structure, not a particular reference. What I mean by that is it automatically changes the A2 from this line into an A3 from this line, which basically you could read it as, use the cell above me plus 0.1. And so if you don't want to do that, for example, if I have a certain number out here that I always want to use as part of a formula, then I can refer to that formula as equal. And now I'm going to put a C, oops, let's do it, a dollar sign C, the dollar sign fixes the C, and the dollar sign here fixes the two. And so now it's just going to repeat the 05. And if I copy that over, it does not update the formula, it's always gonna be C2. If I didn't have the dollar sign in front of the C, then it would allow me to copy 
with the C changing, so going this way, the C doesn't change because I'm still in the C column, so it's always referring to the second entry. But if I copy going this way, the C does change. You can see it goes D2, D3. So I was able to lock down the two with the dollar sign, but then not lock down the uh, C with a dollar sign. Now it's empty here because there's nothing in D2 or E2. Uh, anyway, so that's the way uh, it automatically does its copying. Now what we need is a formula for the sine function here. And what we want to do is we want to use the x value to the left to evaluate f of x. So here I'm going to have a formula. So I type equals and then sine of. And then instead of putting x here, the spreadsheet has no idea what x means. I have to use my own sort of notation above there. The x is the a column. And so I want to use this column, this entry here. And so you can either go over to that entry and click on it, or you could use the arrows to move around and highlight whichever one you want, which is in this case, I want a2. And then I close my bracket, return, and that gives me the sine of minus pi. Okay, so now I could grab onto this, click and drag down like I just did, but because there's a column next to this column that's already filled in, the spreadsheet is clever enough to know what I wanna do. I'm gonna double click and it automatically fills in all the entries in this column all the way down until it gets to the bottom of the neighboring column. Now in some spreadsheets, it always does the left. In some spreadsheets, it does the left unless there's no left, in which case it'll do the right. I think LibreOffice does that. So you can experiment with yours and see how yours operates. Okay, so there we have the, um, the basic data now. Um, so I'm actually recording this video mostly for students in my class who have a question that will require doing some work with this set of columns. I'm going to do something a little different just so I don't give everything away. I'm going to draw, I'm going to plot the graph of this function. So what I do then is I'm going to highlight both columns. So to do that, what I do is I go to the top left column of what I want to highlight. I hold down the shift key. I can use the arrows to move around. And if I want to jump to the bottom of the filled in block of numbers, I can hit command shift and down arrow and it'll jump all the way to the bottom of the column that I'm in, the last one that's filled in at least. And now I want to put my plot at the top of the spreadsheet, so I'll scroll all the way back up here, leaving it highlighted, and I'll click on the chart, insert chart, and now you can see that you can choose all uh, the settings here. You can choose a line chart, will look, which will look like this here. Or if you have data and you want to show the dots as data, you could choose a scatter and so on. So I'm going to choose this one here and I will hit the X to get rid of it so we can see this slightly bigger. And now you can see I have my chart inserted on top of my data. And there's the sign of X plotted. Okay, hopefully that's useful for whatever purpose you have with the spreadsheet. And for my students, I hope this helps you get through question 21 on this week's webwork.